Hello there, citizens of Tamriel. I'm Cal, and today I've got an updated list of high utility homes for the Elder Scrolls Online that I think every ESO player should consider adding to their collection. In the past year and a half, we've seen the addition of new homes to ESO along with several new zones, the companion system, and the Tales of Tribute card game. So I wanted to revisit my list, add some new criteria, and incorporate some of the feedback that I heard from all of you in the first video. I set out to answer a couple of questions. First of all, why own a home in the Elder Scrolls Online? And second of all, if you're going to own a home, which home or homes should you purchase? Generally speaking, housing is cosmetic, so the easy answer is whichever one you like the best. But for anyone out there who's not a housing enthusiast yet, homes in ESO can actually provide a lot of utility. And there's a handful that I think just about any ESO player would benefit from picking up for the convenience and utility they bring to your day-to-day -day gameplay. Of course, housing does provide a creative outlet that allows you to sort of extend your character customization and it unlocks additional storage for your characters. But the main utility that housing brings beyond those is access. Access to the surrounding city and the services it provides. Since you can quick travel for free to any home you own from pretty much anywhere in Tamriel, owning a home in a prime location ensures that you're never far from a banker, stable master, crafting stations, the Undaunted Enclave, an Outlaw's Den, the Emperor or the Battlemaster. I've rated every home in the Elder Scrolls Online across 15 categories to give you a better sense of their overall utility in comparison to one another. You'll find a link to my full rankings in the description below. Alright, let's kick this list off properly with my number 5, Gonfalon Bay's Ancient Anchor Birth. The newest addition to ESO's collection of player homes, the Ancient Anchor Birth is conveniently located on the second floor of the Ancient Anchor Inn in High Isles Hub City. As an expansion hub, Gonfalon Bay of course includes access to all of the standard amenities that you would expect. Crafting stations, writ boards, stable master, banker, and so on. But this inn room gets bonus points for its central location and the fact that Gonfalon Bay serves as the hub for any Tales of Tribute fans out there as it's the only place you can pick up the Tribute daily quests. The fact that Zenimax also brought the Stable Master back inside the city walls of Gonfalon Bay is a nice perk over similar inn rooms like Snowmelt Suite and Pilgrim's Rest. Finally, it doesn't hurt that you can get this one for free just like the rest of the inn rooms in the game. Another new addition to my top 5, and probably the one that was most called out in the comments of my first video, is the Sleet Creek House in Rock Hawk. You guys let me know loud and clear that I may have missed the mark on this one, but I'm always happy to take another look. And I'm happy to say that Sleet Creek is probably the highest utility medium house in the game. It'll cost you 335,000 gold, but it gives you access to Rock Hawk, which is probably one of the best design cities in the base game. It also provides immediate access to an Outlaw's Den with no pesky guards along the way. I recently timed my daily writ routine in every city across Tamriel, and while Rokha doesn't top that list, it does rank surprisingly high as it does have the quickest daily writ route of any of the base game cities. Of course, Rokha is also home to yet another Tales of Tribute Royster Club, and you'll find portals to both the Earthforge and Ivea inside the town's Fighters Guild and Mage's Guild. All of these factors together probably contribute to the popularity of Rokha across the player base, which has in turn seemingly turned it into a hub for guild trading. I often find myself visiting to pick up deals at the guild traders, and having a quick travel option is only going to speed that up. This one's going to set you back a little bit when it comes to the cost, but that does mean it's coming with more storage. So you might be able to turn Sleep Creek into your primary home, and you'll not only have access to a great city, but you'll be able to place more storage, crafting, and other amenities inside the house itself. Moving up one spot this year and coming in at number three is the Flaming Nyx Deluxe Garret of Mournhold. This apartment was in my top five last time around, and its value has only increased in the interim. As the capital of the Ebonheart Pack, Mournhold remains one of the busiest trading hubs in the Elder Scrolls Online. And right outside the tavern, you'll find just about everything you need. This also happens to be the cheapest home in the game that is in close proximity to both an Undaunted Enclave and the Master Writ Turning. I don't love the crafting hub in Mournhold. I would definitely prefer one of the expansion hubs or even something like Elden Root, but if you prefer to stick to a single city for as much of your daily routine as possible, Mournhold might be the way to go, especially if you're short on cash. Regardless, I would recommend picking up the Flaming Nyx Deluxe Garret just because you're going to be going to Mournhold eventually to do some shopping. 
Reclaiming the number two spot on my list is the Sugar Bowl Suite in Rimen. This inn room remains a daily destination for me, as you really can't beat having quick travel to a home that is literal steps away from a way shrine. Rimen also happens to be one of the best cities in the game. It might suffer from a bit of urban sprawl, but I still find it to be one of the top cities to get your daily rates done. The crafting area is of course well laid out, it's easy to find everything, easy to navigate, and the bank is close to the city center as well. You've also got the Battlemaster and the Impresario just outside the front gate. Now, if an in-room just isn't going to cut it for you because it's not enough space, Rimen is also home to the Hall of the Lunar Champion, a manor-sized home that you can claim for free just by doing the first couple of quests from the main story in the Elsewhere expansion. I do love the Hall of the Lunar Champion, and it is a great option for players who don't want to spend a bunch of money on a large or manor-sized home. But its location is not as convenient as the Sugar Bowl Suite, being on sort of the outskirts of the northern side of the city, which means that I typically opt to fast travel back to the Sugar Bowl Suite rather than the Hall of the Lunar Champion. This is especially true now that there is a Royster Club just down the hall from the Sugar Bowl Suite. And for some reason, I seem to have to visit the Rimen Royster Club more often than some of the other cities. It's also still the only in-room in the game with an exterior entrance. So not only is the Sugar Bowl Suite right next to the Rimen Way Shrine, but you don't even have to run through a crowded inn or tavern to get there. All right, guys, you probably know what's coming in at number one. That's right, Snug Pod remains my number one pick for 2022. All things considered, Elden Root is a pretty excellent city, and Snug Pod is located right in the middle of the action. As the capital of the Aldmeri Dominion, Elden Root gives you great access to all the amenities that come with the capital city. You've got all the standard stuff, of course. The Banker, the Stable Master, Crafting Tables, Daily Rip Boards, Rit Turnings, The Outlaws Den, plus the Undaunted Enclave, Master Rit Turn-In, and seven High Traffic Guild Traders. Not to mention that with the addition of Companions, you're probably going to be visiting the Fighters Guild and Mages Guild headquarters for a fair bit. Or the fact that my daily tribute quest seems to always take me to the Elden Root Royster's Club. If you thought Snugpod was good before, its value has only increased since the addition of Blackwood and High Eye. If you weren't big on running Undaunted Dailies or Master Its, you might have been able to get away with skipping Snugpod before, but now it's a key location for two of the new game systems as well. You've also got that Stable Master right outside the front door, and it's arguably the closest home to an actual fence merchant. Sleet Creek might be the closest to the entrance of the Outlaw's Den, but the Elden Root Outlaw's Den is much more compact, and once you're inside, it's only a couple steps to the fence NPC. Now, Snug Pod is a small home, which means you can't get it for free, but 45k should be well within most players' reach before too long. Before we wrap up, I did have a couple of honorable mentions. Now, I don't think any Crown Store exclusives belong in the top five, but High Hallow Hold looks like it's going to be the highest utility manner in the game once it's released. I know I'll be picking it up for sure, and it's probably going to become my primary home. Hall of the Lunar Champion comes close, and of course it's free, but High Hallow Hold's location near the center of Gontalon Bay gives it a utility bonus in that you're not going to have to run as far and you have easier access to some of the city amenities, not to mention the Tales of Tribute Hub. Now beyond High Hallow Hold, I think it's also worth mentioning the Gardner House in Wayrest. It's an expensive one, coming in at just over 1 million gold, but I think it's probably the highest utility large home in the game, and it's the only player home available in Wayrest. Alright everybody, if you're still here, thank you so much for sticking around till the end of the video. I hope that you have enjoyed this update. I'd also like to take this opportunity to give a quick thank you to my patrons. That's right, I have a Patreon now, where for just a couple of bucks a month, you can help support this channel and get access to some bonus content, if that sounds cool to you. So there it is, my list of the top five homes that I think every ESO player should own in 2022. You can grab two of them for free and another two for what most players would consider pocket change. The Sleek Creek House might be out of reach for some of you out there, but you can always wait for the next Zeal of Zenithar event to get a little discount. Of course, even grabbing just the freebies should improve your quality of life in the Elder Scrolls Online, since everyone can make use of a free quick travel to get back home after a long dungeon crawl. If you like this video, you're probably going to enjoy my recent efforts to identify the fastest daily writ city in Tamriel. I should have that video linked somewhere on screen now, along with a playlist of some of my ESO home designs if you're looking for some inspiration. That's going to do it for me today, guys. I will see you all for the next one.